Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Tower Casuals, the Destiny Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Corey Derrick, and alongside me, as always, is the Jotun Toten, the vault dwelling, mayor of the Deep Stone Crypt, the disciple, the flawless, my favorite co host on the Citadel, Josh Finney. Hello. Hi, Josh. Hi, Corey. That is so much smoother. This runs when you do the intros and not me. Hey, you know, look, last. Last week's episode was a, was a big episode, so, uh, you know, it really maybe, was. I, maybe the numbers increase and I'm not here, you know, maybe people just like you more. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. Uh, yeah, la- last week was great. Um, I-, I think John is punching air right now, though, realizing that we got an arc vlog yesterday morning. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> that was a nice surprise. That uh, was a very nice surprise. I was uh, shocked, you might say. To see us get some uh, some arc details, it put a little spark in today's show. Huh. It uh, it jolted my enthusiasm. Huh. Huh. Ah! This show's gonna be electrifying, you might say. This is so bad. You got two guys who love dad <laughs> jokes here. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh man. Uh, yeah. So last week I was on vacation, obviously. So uh, good to be back great to be back i was <laughs> i was asking you before the show i was like man josh what if this was the only show that i did we would be like <laughs> we would be on point every single week every week would be a week you know every man, week so many weeks hmm. so many weeks yeah. and oh, speaking of weeks potentially only a few more weeks in this like little cramped space that i call an office I know. I'm I may be uh, maybe moving you. to another building in my same apartment complex, but uh, looking at getting a two bedroom now that my lease is coming to an end. I've done two years in this apartment. Uh, I'm ready to get a bigger place again, though. I really miss the two bedroom that I had when we first started this show. Uh, mm-hmm. When I was still living down in Austin, I miss having that amount of space. And uh, with me picking up freelance work now, I need to uh, I need to have a quiet area to work where I can close the door, be away from my cat not be on the first floor hallway side uh, Mm. where children run up and down. And maybe I won't have as loud of neighbors above me this next time. Mm. We've heard, we've heard the children. We have all heard the children. We've all heard the dogs there. It is a smaller building too. It's the smallest building in our complex. Mm. There's maybe like 10 apartments in the building across three floors. So I'm very excited if, uh, if that's the case. Mm. Cool. That should be uh, that should be nice. Uh, but yeah, no, it is. Uh, it's been a good week. It, it hasn't been a it week. It's been. been a good week. I see you, Trevor. I see you. I yeah. finally know your Trevor. identity, Trevor. Trevor. We see you. We see you and your. What isn't his like icon like the weird red bear icon? I don't know, him? but I know who you are. Hmm. Hmm. I know where you sit at in the Discord. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but no, it's been 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 a been a busy, good busy week. Mm-hmm. Um, man, saw a uh, saw a new piece of merch that probably went up a little bit too early. Yeah, uh, saw that. That too. I'm uh, I'm waiting to see what the actual price is, and not the price on Big Bad Toy Store. Uh, but yeah. it's, a, it's mm. the gingerbread Christmas ghost, and it's a, but it's an advent calendar, so you like put a piece I on know. each day. It's not an actual like I thought it was a gingerbread kit at first, which. Mm. I was like, nope, I'm good. But uh, realizing it was like hard plastic, I was like, oh man, we it's really cool love though. Christmas decorations in my house, mm. so we mm. might end up getting a Christmas ghost. Do uh, it. I, I, I might like put a Christmas ghost back there on the shelf. Do it. I might have to do it. Yeah. I really love Christmas decorations. <laughs> I buy copious amounts of ornaments every year, so I need some yeah. destiny ornaments. That's what I need. Some good destiny ornaments. You do. You do. Let me tell I, you. I need a ghost on my tree. I, I could go for like a gambit symbol. Ooh. I could go for a, uh, for a crucible one. Like, just give give me like just give me some like small metal ones of the three uh, the three icons. Give me a dawning one. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I do. Give me give mm-hmm. me some give me some mini weapons. Give me like a set of six mini weapons. Yeah. Yeah. Give me a little mountaintop to put on there. Mm. I would put it at the top <laughs> of my tree, right below the Death yes. Star. Give us some cool helmets to put as a tree topper. Oh man, oh, dude, no! I have, I have a Death Star. I'm sorry, nothing can unseat the Death Star from the top of my tree. Oh, that's fair. It uh, that's fair. It's, Spe- it, it lights up. It plays the Imperial March. I can't get rid of it. 
Speaking of Death Star, Josh, guess what? I ordered my Magic Bands today. That's right. Corey's taking another vacation, guys. I am in ten and a half weeks. Uh, it's time. Wow. You might so think we're going to be early. we're going to be coming up on the very end of a season, and Corey's like, "Bye <laughs> <Yep>. again." <laughs> Look, I'm going to go ride Rise of the Resistance, okay? The end of the season. You're going to go on Blue Milk. I am. Oh, I, I had a hearty chuckle at the tweet you sent me the other day. Uh, the uh, the Obama meme of him putting oh, the yeah. Medal of Honor around himself. <laughs> me beating my own score on Toy Story Mania. And I was like, you know, this probably works for Smugglers Run 2. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> Corey's basically like, this is you after doing multiple hits of Blue Milk. <laughs> It's true. That's me after going to Oga's at opening at 9 a.m. <laughs> See the fuzzy Tom Tom is back? Very. Mm. <laughs> One of my all-time favorite drinks. Just The name is so weird. It's such an interesting beverage. Like, the foam on it, people, it tastes like Pop Rocks. Not taste. Yeah. It feels like Pop Rocks because the foam is actually fizzy. It feels like Pop Rocks like on your lips and tongue. It's so weird, but it's so cool. Uh, like tangerine and vodka it's uh mm. it's a thing it, it, it is... it's a whole thing when uh when we went with our friend ray last uh this time last year actually this time uh last year we were getting ready to go to, uh, go to disney world with him and his wife i me and him tried like six different drinks oh. and uh we were like oh boy we really really got to go sit down after this we uh it took us a little bit of effort to make it up to the front of the park Mm. yes but it was good it was good that was the day after we went drinking around the world in epcot mm, that's the best that was that was the, the absolute best, best. so mm. but Corey, so let me ask you oh let me ask ahead. you go real ahead. quick before, yep, yep, before, yep, yep, before, yep. before we get in this huge episode josh huge we got a lot huge of do you when you when you go to epcot do you start in canada or do you start in mexico i start in mexico mm. okay because of that, I don't think that we've ever made it. I think Chelsea and I made it all the way around once, but like every time we go, she's like, "I'm making it to Canada this time." It's mm-hmm. so like we always like call it in the UK since it, we usually come in the back entrance too, right? Um, like where the Skyliner is and like the yeah. Well, so we we stay over at Boardwalk. We use my family's vacation points a lot, mm-hmm. so we tend to stay over at Boardwalk, or um, we'll take an Uber to Boardwalk and just walk over. Mm-hmm. I hate walking in from the front of the park, but at the same time, like all the rides are at the front. So yeah. it's like a catch 22, but like we, we tend to come in, if we go in through the front, we'll like go to breakfast somewhere, like go to the contemporary, mm-hmm. you know, you got to start mm-hmm. any quality day at Disney off with Chef Mickey's. Mm. We yes. go over there or we go to Ohana's or something. Take the, take the monorail over. Have you, start have you ever done Cape it. May? Have you ever done Cape May instead of Chef Mickey's right there at the be- uh, beach and yacht club? I did once a very long time ago. I've never taken her there. We we're going in, uh, guys. We're we're going in February for her thirtieth birthday, and she doesn't know it yet. Um, mm-hmm. Hope she doesn't are... listen to this episode. Yeah, d- <laughs> honey, if you're listening to this, please fast forward. Um, Josh talking about his other partner. <laughs> <laughs> we are uh, we're we're uh, we're going. We're staying at we're actually, we're staying at we're at uh, Animal Kingdom this time. Um, Ooh, fancy. that's their place where we have. Well, it's their place where we have uh, vacation points at. So mm-hmm. we're gonna stay there, and we're we're going with uh, her best friend and his and her husband. So uh, mm-hmm. whose name is also Josh. So J and J, steak studs. We we gotta find a place to have steak at at some point. Mm-hmm. You gonna uh, ride some giraffes over to the animal kingdom? And you know, we just might. We just might, Corey. I think I need to ride a giraffe up to the Guardians of the Galaxy ride. I think it would make sense. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited, dude. I've already I'm like... very excited. I already, I, I already, guys, I don't so... know if you know this about me, but I love superheroes. <laughs> what? <laughs> I, I'm what? very excited to ride a good Marvel superhero ride that, that is not the Incredible Hulk coaster at Universal Studios. That mm. was clearly built when I was like four. Yeah. Mm. So very excited for that. Uh, good old Bradley Cooper. Uh, narrating the ride as Rocket Raccoon. Very, yeah. very excited in an otherwise aging part of the park. Don't forget about Terry Crews being a part of it now. Is too. Terry Crews really a part of it? Yeah. He's a I did not I did not I did Guardians not know that. Of the yeah, supposedly he's supposed to be in Guardians 3 also. Okay, I kinda love but, that. But I want him to just play his character for Brooklyn Nine Nine. 
<laughs> That's all I, I mean, want. I want basically... to talk about. All I want is for him to talk about mango yogurt the whole time. I mean, he's basically just being Terry Crews in space. I hope he's in the Christmas special. Now that I think about it, mm, he might be. He he might be. But Corey, you know what else that we got to get through before a Christmas special comes up? I know we got to talk about Destiny. We got to talk about this arc. We have a lot of Destiny to talk about this week. Bungie pulled a fast one on us last week. John and I were like, ah, there's not going to be much next week. Uh, this is actually kind of a beefy twab, and we have an entire arc 3.0 blog to get through. Um, we're we're just gonna we're gonna start there. We're gonna start and just jump right on in. Um, all I'm gonna say is before we get into the nitty gritty of it. If you were, and not that I think anybody who listens to this show was like this, but if you were one of the little shit wads who harassed <laughs> Kevin Hain, Kevin Yanes off Twitter, you owe him a gigantic apology after reading the Titan Arc 3.0 update. A gigantic apology. It's not Twilight Garrison, but it's pretty goddamn close. You owe him a giant apology. Mm-hmm. Just mm-hmm. saying. I love that they describe this class before we get into it. My favorite, my two favorite things that I've heard is this is the hold W subclass and powering the high speed, high impact goal of arc 3.0 is the 2009 action movie crank to high voltage. I love this. If you don't know what crank two is about. Jason Statham stars as an ex-hitman who has his heart stolen and replaced with a battery. To stay alive, Statham must keep his body electrically charged in increasingly outrageous ways. It's nonstop, relentless, and a great place to start for the fantasy uh, that Theme wanted to achieve. Namely, ridiculous closing speed and maximum impact upon arrival. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. I, I, Guys, I may love Marvel superhero amusement park rides, but I also love Jason Statham movies. This is just like the best day for me, okay? (laughs) You thought this was going to be a street fight? Hmm. Furious. Remember remember when we did that Fast and the Furious spinoff with The Rock? You know, it took me like three years to get around to that because I I love the Fast and the Furious, but I did not want to watch another movie with The Rock in it. My fears were confirmed. That is a terrible movie. It's so bad. What do you mean you don't you don't you don't like how they took out helicopters and Hummers with like uh, <laughs> primitive Hawaiian spears and? No, I moves? also don't like that they wasted Idris Elba as the villain in that movie when he clearly could have been like the big bad for the final couple of real Fast and the Furious movies. Yeah, without the superpowers. Yeah, but then they couldn't have John Cena. Good. <laughs> Good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so John we Cena's had a lot of Fortnite ideas too, about you get this buff, and then, much like Jason Statham's heart, you need to keep it ticking by staying in the fight, says Destiny designer Mike Humboldt. As the design evolved, we strayed a bit from that just because it's hard to achieve in the gameplay of Destiny when you're deleting 75 monsters in a room then running through a hallway. But that was the emotional fantasy we want to go for, very much like living on the edge. Guardians who have spent some time with the revamped versions of Void or Solar, or with Stasis for that matter, know the basics of where to go with Arc 3.0. As with those other subclass options, Arc 3.0 will give players more flexibility over customizing their Guardian's powers to suit their playstyle through the introduction of aspects and fragments. In addition, new and returning class and melee abilities have been built or refactored for the modern Destiny 2 sandbox, making this subclass more powerful than ever. Uh, We got some terminology to get to, obviously, at the top. First is the new buff Amplified, which is key to the Arc 3.0 experience. An Amplified Guardian is faster, both in terms of movement speed and in terms of their weapon handling, and more agile, able to perform long slides that can function as a devastating setup for some of the attacks that follow. Unlike other damage-type buffs, Void Invisibility or Solar Radiance, players don't need to equip any specific aspects or fragments to become Amplified. By default, all Arc classes become Amplified after rapidly defeating targets with any Arc damage and equipped aspects and fragments offer additional ways to become or benefit from being Amplified. After sprinting for a few seconds, an Amplified Guardian will gain another boost in speed, gaining a sizable PvE and damage resistance buff and enabling an even longer slide ability. Imagine full-on Metroid speed booster mode, only Samus now has Gallarhorn. Even if a player is no longer Amplified, as long as they keep sprinting, the speed booster buff will stay active. Remember how last week we talked about one-two punch shotties and liar's handshake? Hunters, this is for you! I can't wait to see some of the absolutely absurd clips I'm going to see from 
things fall with people being uh, amplified. Mm-hmm. On the yeah. debuff side, Arc 3.0 is bringing two to the party, Blind and Jolt. Blinded opponents in PvE won't be able to see naturally and will also be disoriented and unable to fire their weapon. In PvP, blinded opponents will have their screen whited out and their HUD removed for a short period of time alongside a distorted, washed-out audio effect. Jolted opponents who are damaged will periodically send slivers of chain lightning out to nearby enemies, damaging them in the process. It also democratizes ionic traces, which were previously available only to middle tree warlocks. Now available to all traces or objects that when collected will add energy for all your abilities. So now that we've defined, we've been able to define amplified, blind, and jolt. Let's go into the specific subclasses. We very much get an overview of each of the subclasses here. The actual specifics we probably will not get until it's in our hot little hands or we see some of the effects demonstrated during the showcase on Tuesday. Um, So ARC 3.0, like the other subclasses, are things that we really won't be able to talk like fully about until we start engaging in some builds over the next week or two. Um, we're gonna start. We're gonna start with the hunter. Hunter's the first one listed here. It's also probably the most overhauled of any subclass we've gotten in the game ever. Um, they gave us a whole new super because our supers were so bad. You can actually run this in PVE now. So, uh, well, let's talk about this. For hunter, the team imagined the graceful warrior monk, giving the hunter the ability to get in close quarters quickly and effectively make a mess of opponents in the process. We wanted to reward staying in close and being safe while you're in close quarters with an enemy, which is very difficult to do in a lot of our content. We wanted to give them tools to stay alive while they either close the gap or were in a melee combo. That came primarily in the form of giving them crowd control tools. To that end, the Hunter's Arc Staff Super is returning. With Arc Staff, Hunters can block and deflect projectiles with the press of a button, as well as perform an armored dodge, whereupon dodging the Hunter is more resistant than oncoming damage. But one super just didn't seem like enough to the team, thus the introduction of a brand new arc-themed super, Gathering Storm. Here, the hunter leaps into the air, hurling their staff into the ground or into an unlucky enemy like a spear. Upon impact, the staff emits a damaging burst that jolts nearby enemies. Soon after, a giant bolt of lightning strikes the staff and overcharges it, creating a large damage zone around it for several seconds. While overcharged, the staff sends out arcs of lightning to damage any enemies that move near it. On the melee side, we kept the Hunter's Combination Blow ability, feeling like it was right in line with the Graceful Warrior fantasy we were going for. Kills with Combination Blow will refund dodge energy, increase melee damage, and restore a small amount of health, allowing skilled Hunters to chain their dodges and melee attacks into balletic bursts of beautiful fury. In addition, Disorienting Blow Melee returns, blinding opponents with a devastating palm attack while now amplifying Hunter along the way. So let's, let, let's stop there for a second. I, I want to focus on this super for a second. Gathering Storm basically sounds like, what if we took the Stasis Tornado and we made it stationary while giving you a damage buff? It's basically a giant, it's like John and I were talking last week, it's basically a giant anarchy nipple. Uh-huh. This, was, this was our fantasy for the class, was to give us something to make it a good support class. And so now you have the best of both worlds. You've got one arc staff that can be really, really good in PvE or in PvP, um, like it always has been. But I think this will also be good for holding down points in things like control. Yeah. Um, I think this could be a re- when Iron Banner control comes back around, this is going to be absurd. Zone control trials, this could be a lot of fun. Um, I personally like this a lot. Um, uh, I tend to run support weapons anyways. I'm the, I'm the token divinity bitch in, uh, the raid groups that I'm in usually, uh, which is fine by me. I've always liked running the support class. Um, you know, I, I'm trying to master the quick swap between divinity and, uh, rockets or linear fusion. Um, but that is a little bit harder to get down. I like that since divinity is an arc weapon, I will benefit from, some of the buffs here. Uh, I think that's going to be a lot of fun. I particularly cannot wait to use this arc staff against things like Oryx or against Rolk. I think in both situations, it could be a lot of fun. You spike it into the ground for Rolk, and we have to see how big the radius is, obviously. But if you can keep him somewhat towards the middle, he's going to keep getting shocked. He's going to take the damage. Or if you just hurl it into him, which is probably the better option. Um, And then obviously... Don't miss, though. Yeah, don't miss. Uh, it's a little bit harder, easier to miss him than it will be to miss Oryx. Um, yeah. 
I, I'm just very interested to see how. I don't know. I did some. I did some King's Fall where people were missing Oryx with some, you know, by shooting him. So, um, <laughs> well, yeah, we'll 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 see what happens there. Um, let, let's, let's let's talk aspects, you know, because new powers are great and all, but uh, how are we going to beef those up? Hunters have three arc aspects to ch- customize their tactical style. Flow state: defeating a jolted opponent causes you to become amplified. When amplified, the hunter's dodge will recharge faster and make you more resistant to damage and you have quicker reload times. Basically, just like it, you know, just like we talked about, you know, like dip, duck, dive, and dodge. Uh, remember Patches of Houlihan here, essentially. Uh, the mm-hmm. Tempest Strike allows the hunter to perform a sliding melee that launches an arc wave along the ground, dealing significant damage and jolting enemies in its path. We have a very similar melee like that now. Uh which I like to run a lot anyways. If I run art classes, that's basically what I run now. Um, And then Lethal Current. I'm very excited about this one. After dodging, the Hunter's Melee Lunge Range is increased and their next melee attack jolts the target and creates a damaging lightning aftershock. When used with the Arc Staff Super after dodging, the Hunter's next Staff Light attack hits twice. In addition, hitting a jolted enemy with a melee attack will blind them. Finally... Arc 3.0 will also bring Blink Mode back for Arc Hunters. The Blink ability will now include a baseline buff for any class that has access to it, including Void Warlocks. Blink hasn't been touched since D2's release, and it never quite reached the heights of its previous Reign of Terror. We felt like this was a good time to walk a few of the tuning changes back a little and bring Blink's potency at baseline up without needing an exotic equip. In practical terms, that means an increased travel distance and a reworked recharge model for the ability that will keep it fresh while still maintaining its effectiveness. Hunters rejoice. We have spent years and years and years complaining about how this was taken away from us. Now it is back. Now we have to learn how to master it again. More power to you. If this is something that you want to use and you are a hunter, go for it. I personally will not be partaking because I'm really bad with Blink. I'm very bad with it, actually. <laughs> I shall. I shan't be partaking. Um, I I do genuinely enjoy Mask of Bacchus a lot already. Um, so that would probably be my go-to for something in that situation, or you know, run that with Arc. That could actually be a really spicy combo. Um, let's move on spicy. to Warlocks. Yeah, let, let's move on to Warlocks real quick. I, again, th- this is just a broad overview. There's a lot of details we don't have. We want to see how builds come together, things like that. But on paper, Hunter sounds awesome. Warlocks, there's been a bit more of a tepid response here. And I kind of want to highlight this before we dive into the Warlock. It feels like each class really has gotten a chance to shine at least once with Subclass 3.0. With Void, I would argue it was the Warlocks. They had <clears throat> they had the best between Childs of the Old Gods, um, the buff to Nova Bomb, Things like that. They they had some awesome devastating combos, especially when you know you mix in volatile rounds and things like that. With Solar, Hunters were clear cut the best one out of the gate. Although I think Solar Titans really made a run for it once we started actually build crafting around Lorely Splendor. This time yeah. it really feels like Titans are taking the cake with Hunters as like a 1B option and Warlocks are, you know, kind of reserved again. It feels like they just buffed a lot of Warlock stuff, which is good. That's good. They they really, it feels like it's going to restore a lot of things. Like, honestly, if they announce a Geomags buff, then I think Ark is in a phenomenal place for Warlocks. Yeah. Um, we wanted the player to feel like they're channeling the power of the storm through their body. Controlling the storm, controlling lightning like an elemental conduit. Two separate images were at the top of the mind. The Lightning Shaman and Emperor Palpatine in full Lightning Fingers mode while turning Luke Skywalker into Burnt Toast. Well, we all know how that one went for Emperor Palpatine. You light up Luke Skywalker, you th- you get thrown down the Death Star vents. That's just how life goes. Two supers are available for war. Three movies later. <laughs> then come back three movies later and 40 years later and still get hurled into a pit. Um, two supers are available for walks. Chaos Reach and Storm Trance, of course. Uh, we all know that. Um Warlocks will have two melees av- available. Uh, ball lightning melee will send out a ball of floating arc energy that detonates, zapping enemies down from above. Chain lightning will send out arcs of lightning to strike and jolt the primary target and change damage to surrounding enemies in the process. Um, 
the Warlock's whole thing is that being amplified modifies their abilities and powers them up. For Ball Lightning, if you're amplified, the Arc Ball will fly out and zap enemies three times instead of just one time, so you can get more damage out of it. For Chain Lightning, it chains to more targets. More specifically, while the, while the normal Chain Lightning creates a single set of chains that bounce between a set number of targets, when amplified, the ability creates two sets of chains and can potentially jump to twice the amount of enemies. Three aspects are available for Warlocks. The Arc Soul, uh, which we all know about Arc Buddy. We're all very familiar with Arc Buddy. Getaway Artist has long been a fan favorite. Allies who pass through the Rift will also earn an Arc Soul. The Rift charges faster when allies are near. When amplified, any Arc Soul you have or gain is supercharged, increasing the rate of fire. Uh, this is just going to be useful, I think, in ad clearing scenarios. This could actually be really useful if it gets a buff. I know Getaway Artist sometimes, like, isn't always the best thing, but in PvP, it can be the difference between living and dying. Frankly, that like little bit of damage could still kill somebody. Mm -hmm. Lightning Surge. The Warlock activates their melee while sliding to transform into a ball of lightning and teleport forward, calling down a field of lightning bolts at the exit point that jolts targets. And Electrostatic Mines. Arc ability kills and kills on arc debuffed enemies create ionic traces. When you collect any ionic trace, you become amplified. It, it's, like we said, the, the Warlocks really have been built now with all four subclasses to be built all around their abilities. You know, with your rifts have different abilities, your melees, your grenades. Like, I don't know if there is another class that relies as much on their abilities as the Warlock. But I think you could almost say that about all three classes. I think they all have distinctive traits now for each of the subclasses. And I like that. I like that the hunter, the hunters really seem to be focused around the melee, whether it's throwing the invisible smoke, it's the, you know, multiple throwing knives, it's the gunpowder gamble, uh, the Titans. Uh, I think the Titans have had some great melee changes happen, whether it's throwing the shield or, you know, the hammer being fully charged. But, you know, look how much barricades have changed in just the last couple of months for Titans, you know, right. whether it's the overshield one, uh, whether it's, you know, the sunspots you create. And now, you know, we're about to talk about some other changes to the barricade. I think with Warlocks, it's just been like all around like, hey, you really want to go all out with the power fantasy? You want to play as a Warlock. Mm -hmm. That's that, that's that's my two cents right now. And I, I think that giving everybody all classes access to all grenades is also super useful as well. I think that's a lot of fun. Let's talk about it, though, Corey. Let's, Let's do talk it. about the big daddy. Let's talk about Let's Titans. Let's do it. Yeah. Titans haven't traditionally been known as paragons of mobility, but with Arc 3.0, the team is shaking it up. The team had a couple Ooh. inspirations in mind for Titan Arc Revamp. The lead with your fists, bare knuckle brawler, and a freight train. Yeah, you that's what I like. You don't get to move the Arc Titan. They move you. The Arc Titan's ultimate goal is to punch you in the face, and so a lot of what we did for Arc Titan was try and figure out how we facilitate fist-to-face -face contact as much as possible. Yeah. This manifests in a couple of devastating supers, returning for Arc 3.0. Fist of Havoc and Thunder Crash. The latter is practically unchanged from before. Fist of Havoc now has an adjusted slam radius that's halfway between top and bottom path, and the ground slam leaves a damaging field in its wake, while slamming from the air causes damaging AoE effect from previous top tree behavior. In the case of Thunder Ooh. Crash, uncoupling a subclass's ability from its old subclass diamond system will result in some substantial buffs depending on how players use it. It's one of the intrinsic advantages that new subclass 3.0 system brings to Destiny. When you start pairing them with different things, even though nothing changed about the actual ability, they can end up being significantly stronger as a result, because now they aren't locked into a canned set of perks that surrounded them. Thunder Crash is a great example of that. One of the biggest changes coming to the Arc Titan is the new Thruster class ability. By double tapping a button while on the ground, the Titan bursts in their throttle direction at speed, performing a quick first-person evade comparable in distance to a hunter dodge. Arc is the damage type that's all about mobility, so if we were going to add a mobility boost anywhere for Titans, it was going to be here. For melee attacks, Titans retain the seismic strike soldier shoulder charge, which will blind enemies. Performing a strike while amplified increases the radius of blind, and blinding effect will last longer. Ballistic Slam also returns, where players can slam the ground after sprinting in the air, creating a damaging explosion upon impact. Those are joined by a brand new charge attack known as Thunderclap. Here, the Titan player holds the melee button and charges up arc energy that can be unleashed, I, unleashed either in a quick, powerful jab or held and built up to be unleashed in a furious one-punch man-style blast that will devastate an opponent. If you've ever wanted to throw a punch like All Might in My Hero Academia, this is the subclass for you. 
So mm. for that reason, I will be playing on Arc Titan next season a little bit. I am so excited for Thunderclap. <laughs> yeah. The charge state cannot be stored, and the Titan must be on the ground to charge the punch. The damage is significant. A 90% charge Thunderclap will one-shot Guardians in PvP, but that reward will be balanced by the time it takes to build up that charge level and the fact that you must remain stationary to charge. Always a dangerous move in PvP. Oh, gross. Like other subclasses, Titans have three aspects to select from. The Touch of Thunder improves arc grenades in the following ways. Flashbang fires additional blind impulse on its first bounce. Pulse. When the grenade damages an enemy and it creates an ionic trace for the Titan. Pulse grenade damage increases over time as the grenade lingers after impact. Lightning. Grants an additional charge for a lightning grenade and jolts targets on initial blast. Storm. Creates a roaming thundercloud that moves and tracks enemies similar to the stasis hunter's silence and squall super firing lightning bolts at the ground underneath it. Ooh. I am excited to see how storm works with the arc grenades i'm very curious yeah that's interesting. i think that that could that could either be really cool or really cool and really broken at the same time yeah um juggernaut i'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with i'm gonna go with broken at first <laughs> i'm gonna go with broken also when you consider um things like thunderclap <laughs> yeah mm, i think this is gonna yeah. be a really fun class but it's gonna ha i think it's gonna have to be reined in a tiny bit yeah um, I, I'm curious to see how the numbers on uh, Thunder Crash and how many Thunder Crashing Titans are going to get launched at Oryx right off the bat. Look, I I'm all for powerful Titans, but even 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 me as a Titan who could use all the help he can get is like hmm 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 hmm. That's all. Josh is sipping his Gatorade, <sighs> so I was filling time. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Sorry, I I got a lot to read tonight. I gotta I gotta keep hydrated. While sprinting a juggernaut, while sprinting with full class and ability energy up, the Titan gains a frontal shield that blocks incoming damage. When amplified, the shield is stronger. Once the shield is depleted by taking damage, the player's class energy is depleted. I want to on the record that I called this last week. I said I wanted to see a mobile shield. I'm pretty sure I said this like a month ago. I said I wanted a mobile. Well, shield. I reassured Joe Asis during his question last week, where he said that, you know he's really been enjoying the healing factors of Void and Solar, and I says I hope that you get a portable arc barricade. And lo and behold, yeah. here we are. To be fair, I said I said that it should be an exotic <laughs> arm, like a, a exotic gauntlet for Titans for Void. There for probably Void. will be an exotic that buffs this. I, I think yeah. of any titan ability that would get an exotic at this point i think this is the first one that they would do um yeah. just like i find it really hard to believe that they aren't going to do one to buff the new hunter super yeah um knockout melee kills trigger health regeneration to make the titan amplified critically wounding an enemy or breaking their shield increases melee range and damage for a brief period titan's base melee becomes arc empowered while knockout is active uh all three of those sound awesome. If I'm building a Titan, I don't know which ones I go with. Probably Touch of Thunder and Juggernaut, but if I'm going for Ad Clear, Knockout is definitely uh, a top contender. Yeah. I don't know, man. Like, all three of these sound genuinely awesome. I think the yeah. others, you, like, have two that you probably would pick out right away, um, depending on how you want to play, but, man, I don't... I don't know. I think these are clear cut the three best aspects. Yeah, these um, are cool. And then a there's a couple fragments. To close out, we've got info on four fragments. Spark of Beacons. When the player is amplified, arc special weapon kills create a blinding explosion. Uh, if you have been working on a Nezerax Whisper or a Come to Pass like John and I talked about last week, this is the uh, fragment that you will want to be using. Um, when surrounded by enemies, the player has increased damage resistance on Spark of Resistance. Spark of Momentum, sliding over ammo will reload your weapon and grant a small amount of melee energy. Sliding over heavy ammo increases the amount of energy granted. And then Spark of Shock, the player's arc grenades jolt enemies. Um, beacons and uh, Resistance sound awesome. Spark of Momentum is similar to an ability that um, Arc Titans already had, if I'm remembering correctly, or it's, spe mm -hmm. it's a specific exotic, one of the two. Um so I'm very curious to see this play out on other 
classes now, um, now that it's all mobile. Um, and not just in PvP. I think that some of these are going to be really, really good in PvE encounters as well. Like, I can see me running a lot of ARC now um, for some of yeah. the... Uh, maybe not for bo- not, maybe not for a ton of boss encounters, but for... Um, like, I, I'm thinking of certain ones in Vow of the Disciple. And I mean, like, all, th- all the first three encounters, I could... I mean, the all four encounters, really, I could see myself running ARC now. Yeah. Um, especially if there's multiple hunters, because you don't need multiple tethers. Um, right. And Golden Gun, obviously, is not... Celestial Nighthawk's not what it used to be, thank God. Um, Vault of Glass, it could be really useful. I mean, I I just think the way that they've structured raid bosses lately, it's funny that we're getting all this, and then uh, King's Fall is most likely the boss. (laughs) King's Fall is probably the next raid, where, uh, yeah, uh, most of this might not be remotely useful. So, You know where a lot of this might actually be useful would be Wrath of the Machine. (laughs) Oh, God. Oh, no. If it's Wrath of the Machine, I'm going to be so disappointed. But I digress. Um, I mean, I want King's Fall just as much as the next person, but, like, a lot of this would actually be really useful in, the, in that range. Well, we're, we're going to save we're gonna save thoughts on King's Fall versus Wrath of the Machine and give our final predictions uh, a little bit later when we do some showcase predictions. Let's get through the Chwab real fast. The Chwab! Chwab! So, yeah, there there's an awful lot of... Um, there's there's a lot of arc 3.0 stuff so there, there's a recap of it here at the top um again we basically just read from the blog post you guys can go check it out obviously there will be new things shown off on tuesday as we start to create builds um i can't wait to see some of the wacky combos people come up with um before the raid and after the raid i'm very excited um so let's 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 talk artifact mods though i this is something we haven't had in a while they dropped everything on us right here at the beginning we i don't remember the last time we ever got if we've ever gotten every single artifact mod told to us in advance no i Uh, wonder if this i wonder if this is like prepping for bigger changes you know i i hope Uh, so 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 i i want to read i want to read how how they kicked this off new season means new mods we've heard the community loud and clear on the state of champion mods in addition to the weapon tweaks mentioned in last week's swap we've got a different menu set up up for grabs when it comes down to crafting that perfect build uh so andrew veen who's a senior senior designer uh says we've got a lot of love for machine guns and with the weapon meta featuring them heavily with the new season we have several ways to share that love when crafting that perfect new arc build with arc 3.0 being all about rapid fire mayhem mods like uh holster scavenger and overload more obtainable and unlocked sooner seemed like a great fit uh there's a trifecta of returning favorites from season of the chosen scout and sniper targeting anti-barrier sniper and sundering glare we're excited about these especially because players have been clamoring for the return of anti-barrier sniper and the season's meta and encounter time spade at the perfect time to add it in one of the new mods we're featuring is bad amplitude we created this particular mod to increase access to jolt in season 18 while also giving players a new answer to the age-old question how can i make champions explode hype train conductor and trace evidence are also new to the artifact (laughs) though these two mods will make more sense when you have some hands-on time with arc 3.0 for mods that are entirely new we've got those mods bolded in the chart so it's easy to spot what's new anything not bolded is either based on previous mods or reprisals so i want to read each of these out you know we're just going to fly through these um i want to i want to shout out the name hype train, train conductor, conductor. Name i'm of the episode everybody i'm very yeah can you can that please be the name of our episode yes thank you um so on the first row where you normally have your champion mods you've got overload bow unstoppable pulse rifle anti-barrier scout rifle anti-barrier auto rifle unstoppable shotgun Ooh. uh oh. legend of acrius yes. anybody is it is yes. it time no meme Yes. After two perk choices, you can unlock Scout Rifle Loader, Sword Ammo Scavengers, Machine Gun Holster, Scout and Sniper Targeting, that's one uh, one mod together, and Bottomless Bounty 1 improves two origin perks. Uh, so curious to see how that one works. Uh, after four perk choices, Glaive Loader, Focusing Strike, Focusing Strike, causing damage with a melee ability grants class ability energy. Uh, so going to be awesome for those uh, hunters running around uh, with their twirly staffs and for the uh, Titans punching everything. That's going to be a great one. Uh, and then there's a combo arc and solar resist chest mod. I think we already have that this season. 
um, or it's solar and void or something. But we have it's, something it's very so, similar no, this it's, season. It's solar and stasis. Is it solar and stasis? I, think I don't so. think it's so. No, it's not solar and stasis. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm running two of them on my uh, chest piece right now. I don't think There's it's solar so and stasis. Um, There's something that's solar and stasis. Maybe it's not that. Maybe it's something else. Machine gun ammo scavenger. Bottomless bounty two improves two origin perks. Um, after eight perk choices, here's where it gets spicy. Anti-barrier sniper. It's back. It's back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm so excited for this. Overload LMG. Uninterrupted fire from equipped machine guns will stun enemies with a beam that delays energy regeneration and reduces enemy damage output. Strong against overload champs. Bad Amplitude, which is a class mod. Uh, cla uh, class item mod. Damaging a champion with an arc ability causes the champion to become jolted. Surge detonators and Inferno Whip. And then, of course, after 10 perk choices, the really fun ones. Thunderous Retort. Arc supers do more damage when cast while in a critical condition or while amplified. Hype Train Conductor. Plus two seconds to amplified timer and it stacks. Trace hmm. Evidence. Precision hits on arc debuff targets will generate ionic traces. Lightning strikes twice and sundering glare. This is going to be wild. I am very excited. Uh, there is a note here at the end. We'll take an additional moment here to say that Hype Train Conductor, Bad Amplitude, and Lightning Strikes Twice have a lot of potential for those looking to make a spicy Guardian even spicier. Oh, I'm making I'm making my titan the hype train conductor that's that's just what i'm gonna be do you have the conductor emote Corey? uh no is well from uh the christmas event when they had the sparrow i think so the train i, I think at I one point the there sparrow. was a conductor emote though where you have like a little I've, baton yeah i have the sparrow i do not have the i'm just gonna that's what i'm gonna do this season i'm just gonna ride the train is what i'm gonna do <laughs> The, they're the they're gonna remaster uh the the song love train into hype train oh no i just watched the martian the other day and that's like one of the better like beginning of the credits i've ever seen in a movie oh, where no. that song's playing showing everybody in the future uh, that would be great i just i see zavala being the hype train commander where he has like a little conductor's hat on oh my gosh and some overalls some overalls yeah it'd be great um <laughs> <laughs> getting guardian we're getting our calendars the raid launch is set for august 26th iron banner arrives on september 6th and november 15th and both weeks will feature the new eruption mode trials of osiris returns the week of september 16th and grandmaster nightfalls will return on october 4th and last but not least festival of the cost makes everything haunted on october 18th <laughs> uh team mech baby team mech yeah very excited yeah i'm um, excited to be a gundam titan they're very excited to be a gundam titan uh one one last little note that we have here uh before we jump into our uh predictions for the showcase because that is actually next in the twab uh twitch drops are debuting in destiny 2 for the first time as a small token of appreciation for, for of appreciation for stopping by to watch our Destiny 2 showcase on Twitch, we will be offering up this glorious Starbirth emblem as a reward. To be eligible, you need to make sure your Twitch account is linked with your Destiny 2 account and your Bungie.net profile so you don't miss out. It's simple. Tune into the official Bungie Twitch channel. There are nine channels total on August 23rd from 9 a.m. Pacific to 11.30 a.m. Pacific and watch at least 10 minutes of the showcase for that sweet celebratory loot. I want to know how long this showcase is supposed to be because 9 a.m. Really Pacific long. is when the pre-show starts, right? The actual showcase is supposed to, or no, no, hang on. Um, we're going to pull up the actual times. I sent them to Corey last week or a couple days ago. I want to see. Ex so the pre-show is supposed to start at 8 a.m. Pacific time. The showcase begins at 9 a.m. Pacific. Is this thing two and a half hours long? sounds like it plus a pre-show what the fuck are you planning on showing us here <laughs> like bro the anyways I, I 
So, okay, so I think this kind of explains it a little bit. Once the showcase itself wraps up, don't hop out too soon. Following our following our take on show and tell, we'll also be hosting a post show live stream with some of the team to talk about what was shown off. We're especially excited to welcome D Flawless, a wildly passionate content creator that has proven time and time again he's got the stuff Guardians are made of onto the stage to chat with us. If you're interested in learning more about the world of Destiny 2 from the mouths of those who continue to craft its future with each season, you're not going to want to miss out on this. Um, okay, so that kind of clears it up for me a little bit. I do think that it's probably going to be about a half hour of a showcase, maybe 45 minutes, and then the rest will be interviews like they've done with Datto in the past. They've had Datto up there. I believe they've had Gathalion up there. Um, shout out to D Flawless. If you've never watched his videos, they're fucking hilarious. Yeah. Like, he perfectly encapsulates this community. Um, I will say right now, when we are doing our reactions on Tuesday, I'm hitting the record button the second that the bulk of the showcase is over. Um, I.e., once we get through, like, 30, 45 minutes of it, I'm hitting record. And if anything major comes in, I will have... Uh, I'll have Twitter pulled up, obviously, so I can, like, deviate to anything that's clarified, but we will be talking about the bulk of what's shown in, like, the Vidoc and things like that. Um, we're not going to watch two and a half full hours before doing a reaction, mainly because I have things I have to go do that day. I actually will barely get to enjoy the launch of the season until um, probably late, late, late Tuesday night. Um, so... Anyways, all that set aside, uh, you get this pretty sweet-looking emblem. I really like this. It's very colorful. Big fan. Um, looking to make sure there's Big nothing fan. else here. Uh, I don't think there's anything else to talk about here. I think we're ready. Corey, let's keep the we're showcase ready. talk going. Let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. Uh, we, we gave some predictions a few weeks ago when this first got announced. Now that we're five sleeps away, five days away, guys. Uh, let's, let's do some last minute final predictions, uh, on what's going to happen here. Let's, uh, we'll, we'll go one, one. So like, you know, I, uh, I'll say one, you say one. Um, right. Obviously just getting it out of the way at the top, Lightfall. They've already confirmed Lightfall is the number one thing that we're seeing here. Mm hmm. Lightfall and yeah. Season 18 are the two things we have absolutely guaranteed here, as well as yeah. a little bit of Arc 3.0 and whatever the rate is. Like, those are the things we can guarantee just broadly. Now, how much of Lightfall we actually see, I think, is going to be up in the air. I think you'll get a cinematic trailer. I don't think you're getting much else. And I for think Lightfall? that's... For Lightfall? For Lightfall, because we are two seasons away. Um, I think that this is, this is kind of the first time we've seen... It's going to be a little bit tricky for them to be able to show off season 18 to show off the expansion but tiptoe around what season 19 is about ultimately mm -hmm. um i think this is going to be a little bit difficult this is going to be unlike a showcase that we've seen before because the past showcases it's always been the season before the launch shadowfall mm -hmm. got unveiled the day that opulence launched or the week before opulence or something like that mm -hmm. beyond light got revealed the same day as season of arrival season of arrivals was like five months long yeah mm -hmm. witch queen <laughs> Revealed the same day Season of the Lost launched, six-month season. They're not doing a six-month season this time, as far as we know. It's two seasons between now and then. And you don't want to spoil Season 19 before you're even through 18. Right. But, I wonder if we'll get another kind of tease when Season 19 happens or something. Because remember I, I last year, they also had when the 30th get the anniversary stuff to show off. Yeah, last year we had the 30th anniversary stuff also. Um, I think that you're going to probably get... Because that kind of lined up with the 30th anniversary. We got the second cinematic trailer at the Game Awards. Um, mm -hmm. Roughly the day that that happened. That the 30th yeah. anniversary stuff happened. I think that you'll probably get the main cinematic now. Yeah. Um, and it'll kind. it's going to be kind of be like, okay, well, so here's where we are now with season 18. Now, how do we get to what's happening in this trailer? Um, right. Let's talk about what do we expect to see? What do, what do we expect to see in this? Well, uh, since I bet we see a little bit of what their NetEase project is because they are streaming this also to that Chinese YouTube equivalent. Uh, what is it? Billy Billy or something? Billy Billy. Yep. It's, it's going to be on Billy yeah. Billy. Uh, that was my first so, thought as well. 
Yeah, so I think we're going to see whatever that mobile project is, whether it's Destiny related or not. My guess is that it might be, uh, but I'm not 100% sure. I bet we see something like that, though. Okay. Um, I would be, if it's a Destiny related project, I would be willing to bet it, that we see it. Um, it would make sense, too. Like, that's an extraordinarily long showcase. Like, maybe it's in the pre show or something. Um, mm-hmm. I just, I guess I'm just, I'm hesitant to guess anything that's not explicitly Destiny 2 right now because it is called a Destiny 2 showcase, not a Destiny showcase. Right. Um, if it was that, I would think it would encompass the whole franchise. But if this is really going to be a little spinoff game set in the Destiny universe, sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, they can, I mean, they, it doesn't, it could be like a three minute thing that they show as an interstitial between sets for what they're showing off for Lightfall or something. You no, know? no, a- absolutely. Absolutely. I, I'm not, I'm definitely not disagreeing with you. And I think the fact that they're marketing this as YouTube, watch on YouTube, Twitch, and Billy Billy really. Uh-huh is like the clearest cut evidence along with like some of the job postings we've seen recently that they're ready to like, they're getting ready to maybe start discussing this. We first heard mm-hmm. to talk about this, what, three, four years ago. Like it's uh, probably I it time. About, I think it was right after forsaken. It was like right after it was like, before the, the split. whole. Yeah. It was while the split was like kind of taking place because they took that investment after the split. I think I'm, I'm pretty sure. Because why would they take an investment from NetEase if, well, I guess they were still technically independent, really. They just, Activision was publishing. So I guess they could have taken an investment while still under Activision for something else. But if they turn that investment into a Destiny property. Four years ago. Four years ago is when this happened. So it would have been before the split. Yeah. Okay. That would have been when Forsaken was coming out. Yeah. I, I remember it happening around Forsaken. I just didn't know if it was before or after. Yeah, but I then just, I uh, also I, I searched it really quickly. Um, June first, twenty eighteen. Jeez, that's so long ago. Uh, we're excited to announce we've an, uh, entered into a new partnership with NetEase to help us explore new directions. With their industry expertise, they'll empower us to build new worlds and invite players new and old to join us there. They'll help us support separate teams inside Bungie to bring our newest ambitions to life. If you're a player of Destiny, this news will not impact the hobby you've come to know. Destiny is an experience that will grow for many years to come. We'll continue to work with our partners at Activision, LOL, to foster this global community and turn new players from all over the world into Guardians. Our commitment to that world is not diminished by this announcement. We have exciting plans for the future of the Destiny franchise, and you'll learn more about the next steps we'll take together in the weeks to come. So this was back, this was right around the time they unveiled Forsaken. Um, okay. So our, and they say at the top of it, our long-term goal is to become an entertainment company that sustains many worlds simultaneously, Destiny and new worlds to come. I am still not totally sold that this is a Destiny game. Um, it would make yeah. sense to me if maybe after the split with Activision, Bungie went to them and said, hey, we'd really rather keep it things in-house and not create a new ip just for mobile right now yeah. um and i could see netty saying well fuck yeah let's go um yeah. destiny actually has a surprising like fan base in korea i believe it is um yeah. people have to play it you have to play at internet cafes they actually have a vendor there that does nothing but sell exclusives um mm-hmm. so that you don't have to rely on the zur timetable over there mm-hmm uh, and things like that. So I'm curious to see if that maybe plays a part in this. If it is a Destiny game, I will be very cautious about this. Of course, if you don't know NetEase, Diablo Immortal. Uh-huh. That's all I should have to say. Diablo Immortal. Uh-huh. Um, I'm. What if it's a What if it's a match three Ingram game? What if I mean, I'd play, it. Of Candy Crush, I'd play it. I don't even care. I'd play it. I would be so disappointed. Uh, I think that Bungie could make something really special as a mobile game. I just don't know that NetEase is the company to do it with. Yeah. Um. So we'll we'll see. That definitely could well, be something it's better than the Embracer Group or Tencent or something. <sighs> that's <this> point. <laughs> that's true. That's it's not really saying much, but it's true. Rick I. Lord of the Rings, by the way, Josh. Sorry about that. <laughs> I've been in mourning for the last 20 hours. Um, my personal prediction is it's the same that it's been for a while now. I think this is the year when we start hearing about some of the uh, extra media projects that were that are being worked on. Um, I suspect that I don't think that we get a teaser here 
I think that's probably still like next spring. Maybe next spring when we get the Vidoc for Lightfall, like a couple weeks before release, maybe we get like the first teaser footage or a teaser trailer for it. But I think mm-hmm. that they outright confirm that they are making a, a Destiny animated series. They've mm-hmm. done too much oh, hiring yeah. and promoting within not to make an announcement like that sometimes. Yeah, I mean, they they got the people from Arcane and they got what I think they got a, a des- uh, uh, artist from Castlevania. Like, I, yeah, there's so the direct no the, the director and creator of Arcane is heading up whatever project that Bungie is doing. Yeah. They are working. Didn't they just hire like a TV? Didn't they just hire a lady who like worked at Paramount or CBS for a while? Yep. Yep. So yeah, I mean they they're staffing up clearly. I just don't know if they're ready to talk about it here or if this is something that we'll maybe see at like the Game Awards or something. Yeah. Um. It feels like this may be still like six to eight months off, but I think we like at least get the outright confirmation of something. That is not the games being created. I think something gets announced here. Mm-hmm. Um, I wonder if... So we we keep saying this, and I'm so sorry to those of you who responded to our poll a few weeks ago who said that you still play on last-gen consoles. It, it, it's time. Goodbye. I'm sorry. We, we, got, we got to leave those consoles behind. You've now got a seven-month window to go get a, new, a next-gen console. Um, I know that that's a lot easier said than done, and I know that not everybody's budget permits it. Um, ultimately, I think the game is going to have to do that, though. I mean, two weeks ago, <laughs> Xbox Series X was four hundred dollars somewhere, and Xbox Series S was two twenty nine somewhere. Um, I will also add that uh, PS Direct, the official PlayStation site, has had PS fives in stock for like the last thirty six hours. Mm hmm. Um, now granted, and guess who can't buy one one. because I already bought one for someone. You, yeah, me. Do you want a digital PS5 story? I mean, yes, I I would rather have a digital one. We'll talk later. Okay, we'll talk later. Um, I I do wonder if this is when we officially get that confirmation. Uh, video cards are easier to buy now, obviously. Uh, production has really like ramped up, microprocessors are easier now, things like that. Uh, I hope everybody heard that in the in the Martin Sheen voice from The Departed. Microprocessors. Oh, no. Oh, God. I love it. I love that movie. It's so bad, but it's so good. Um, I, I do genuinely wonder if this is where we get that announcement, and maybe we start getting the first hints of what Goliath is meant to be down the line. Um, yeah. Because if you're going to announce that you're going to abandon support for last gen, I think that you have to announce that all previously released content is going to be put back into the game. You yeah. can't just wait for a story reason anymore at that point. Because mm-hmm. that was the whole reason why they pulled it in the first place was because, well, the size of the game and things like that. I see a reality in which you have the planets are all brought back, um, maybe unvaulted or whatever, where they get done throughout the next year. I could see it not all happening at once, but it getting spread out, maybe for like last mm-hmm. gen. I don't, I don't know, but like there, there's some figure out some wacky way to bring them back, um, and enable access to all strikes, mm-hmm. strikes, and make the maybe make the raids an option, the raids and the campaigns optional downloads. Um, mm-hmm. But if you were to do that, I mean, that would instantly buff up your strike playlist, your your Vanguard Ops playlist that would allow players who have already bought everything who are still stuck on last gen to be able to enjoy the entire story. It would allow new lights to be able to play the whole story all the way through now. Um, And I've been steadfast in my belief that I think that the tower and the EDZ are probably the targets for being vaulted. I I would also say that we're going to, we're going to find out what's getting vaulted on Tuesday. Yeah, You're going to have to make that announcement now and not three months before you do it. Right. Um, Yeah you're going to have to make the announcement now. Um, and for yeah. me, vaulting those two makes the most sense. Um, yeah. Keep the Cosmodrome and just kind of explain, well, it's kind of happening outside of time and space. That's the new yeah. lights area. Yeah. Um, even if you only do it for a year, which is probably all it would be, I think it's it's time. It's time mm-hmm. to at least vault the tower and the EDZ. You can bring the EDZ back next year, whatever, or make it accessible if you're playing through the campaigns. I don't know. 
but it, yeah. it's it's time. You can't vault Nessus, unfortunately, because Nessus has four strikes and two battlegrounds associated with it. Yeah, inverted spire. Love it. That Proving brand grounds. new strike. <laughs> Proving grounds. Exodus down. I mean, there was a time when I would have advocated for it to be taken out, but there's just too much shit there now. I hate Exodus down. I, I, I hate, hate it too. The so only much. one where I go straight. That corrupted, I tend to just say, fuck it, I don't uh, know, I'll play through this on normal difficulty. Ugh, gross. Uh, so I have a bold prediction, Josh. Okay, yeah, let, let's let's shift away from the obvious. Let's go. Let's go to bold. Let's go to bold predictions. I have a bold prediction, and I was thinking about this as I was running around uh, the Leviathan earlier mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. this week, trying to finish up some things. And uh, by the way, Callus's floating head in the middle of the the helm was. Uh, yeah, we haven't even gotten to that yet. That was uh, that was a thing. Yeah, um, I think they're going to bring. Depend. It depends on if. Now th- this all depends on if King's Fall is really the raid they're bringing back. Yeah, but I think they're going to bring the Dreadnought back as a patrol space. They're going to bring back those strikes. They're going to rework the Court of Oryx into a public event style activity. They're going to do it all. So I love that you're saying this because I had the same thought earlier after seeing a tweet from uh, the uh, person who runs today in destiny.com uh, JP Deathblade. He, he said this earlier and I want to find his exact words that he said. Oh, he said it last night. The biggest dick energy thing that Bungie could do on the 24th is set the next season on the dreadnought and bring the full location plus King's fall plus two strikes into destiny Two. Revamp the Court of Oryx for seasonal activity. Put the 50 fragments plus Touch of Malice in. Just lean into it. Do Taken King 2.0. This got 2,000 likes in under 24 hours. Um, I, mean, I absolutely 100% agree. I I would love it. And they could bring Shield Brothers back and change it up just a tad to make it make sense. But also, Shield Brothers is awesome. I cannot. I hope that strike comes back. I, yeah, J- John and I have talked about it uh, at length. We would love to see Shield Brothers as a GM because it would just be the most punishing thing ever put into Destiny. Um, mm. I John, would absolutely... uh, imagine that as a Grandmaster. That's what I was saying. Like, I, man, I would do Corrupted before that. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. That's how bad it's going to be. Um, I, I would still really, really, really like this. Um, we and I mean Dark Blade would still work as a strike because you just rework some of this stuff with Lucian with uh, Lucian Hive instead, mm-hmm. and you could make it to where well we know that the Light Blade's ghost disappeared. <clears throat> he resurrects him on the Dreadnought. The end. Yeah. Um, I also Destiny has shown no no uh they have not shied away from changing the boss of a strike. Omnigal. Yeah. Omnigal. You know, so. yeah, 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 yeah. I, uh, I definitely don't think it's out of the, uh, I don't think it's out of the question. Um, I, I think the dreadnought still has to have a part to play. It's just chilling there. Mm-hmm. I would love to see this be a thing, but <clears throat> I'm not, and this is why we're calling it bold predictions. I'm not going to hold my breath because I feel like something like this would be maybe more closely tied to an expansion, but it would solve a couple of problems. It would give you a couple more strikes. It would give you two strikes to replace the two that theoretically would get vaulted if the EDZ does. Mm -hmm. And you would be able to change the enemy density in those strikes, which is already pretty good for D1 standards. Mm -hmm. Uh, They're two of the better strikes in Destiny 1, I would say. Definitely two of the more challenging. Yeah, Um, Shield Brothers is awesome. Dark Blade's, I mean, Dark Blade's fine, but it's it's better. Dark Blade than was a lot of hell of on a nightfall in D one. Well, yeah. So I would I would really like to see both of those brought forward. I think that opens the door for the exotic swords. Oh, if no. you were to do as that, as long as look, as long as we, there's a new way to get them, and we don't have to like collect crap for them. My my whole thing with this would be, if you're gonna go through all the trouble of bringing back the dreadnought, I don't want it to. I I want it to be better than the Leviathan was first off. But second off, I don't want it to just go away the second that the season over. Maybe they, and this is me spitballing, because this has like maybe a 20% chance of happening. 
Um, but thanks to the Leviathan, we cannot rule anything out now. Yeah. Um, if they were to bring it back, I would like to see it brought back as a permanent patrol area. Just bring back the whole destination. Pull a Cosmodrome oh, yeah. like you did um, with Beyond Light. Yeah. Bring it back. I mean, that would open... And I think if they did that, that would be the clearest evidence that, hey, we're planning on bringing all of V1 forward. Yeah. Um, At least the, you think the entire game or just the, just the locations and strikes and stuff? I mean, I, I've been clear in the past that I think that eventually um, the campaigns and the strikes and the raids will all be brought over. Um, yeah. Into just a core game called Destiny once it goes like fully to the cloud, but that is probably still like two, three years that's, away. That's probably that big thing that's, that's happening that's what, after the that's final what shape. That's what I speculated that Goliath is um, back yeah. on episode one hundred. That's what I was saying is that 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 would be yeah. my ultimate dream is for all yeah. that to happen. Um, I said it then, and I said it after uh, we saw the GDC banners. Um, I would really like for that to happen. That is probably yeah. a pipe dream. But it's getting close to the time where, hey, Destiny 1 is 8 years old right now. Yeah. Um, they're not going to keep those servers going forever. Especially if they bring everything forward. I think that would give them like carte blanche to say, hey, matchmaking's going to be disabled, but you can still play like locally or something for a little while. And then they're going to have to kill that too. Like Games as a service are such a tricky thing with that because Destiny's obviously lasted the longest out of a lot of these. Yeah, and there's a lot of history behind the franchise now, so I don't know how you handle that, but I mean, there's still people apparently who play on 360 and PS3. I know. Um, I <laughs> I can't believe that, man. Like, I can't either. I can't believe you played it on that in the first place. Yeah. Um. I mean, I played I played Destiny One for like, I think I played the first three levels because I ended I had it pre ordered mm -hmm. on 360, and then I got a PlayStation Four. And I was like, well, I already have it pre-ordered. I'll just get it, right? Because I had, like, uh, whatever the... There was, like, a collector's edition. And then I was like, no, nah, I can't play this. I can't play this here. So here, 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 here's my, here's my like, spin foil hat theory. We've heard the rumors that next season is something mm -hmm. different mm -hmm. than we've seen before. I think that bringing an entire location back would fit with that. Mm -hmm. Um, What if... Mithrax and the Splicers accompany us to the Dreadnought this time. Oh, that'd be so cool. Because the other rumor we've heard is that it's supposedly pirate themed. That if you're going to be pirate themed, and we know that Drifter and Eris are fucking around in the reef right now, man, I'm talking myself into this, and I don't want to get my hopes up. Um, They're already there, Josh. We can see it. We my wild theory. Um, <laughs> Gambit maps. <laughs> Unvault the two Gambit maps. There's no reason for them to be vaulted. It has now been over three years since we got a new Gambit map. I know. Three years. Mitch Just and, take the, Mitch take and I the were mode out. Just it. take it out. A couple weeks ago, Mitch and I were talking about that. We were like, we were doing Gambit because we were just like, whatever. We'll just play some Gambit because we're dumb. And uh, we were like, are they, are they it's seriously the same three maps <laughs> for like since Forsaken? It's ridiculous. Yeah, it's ridiculous, especially when like Crucible has maps on planets that are vaulted. You know, it doesn't make any sense to me. It doesn't I, make I sense. Think you should get rid of it. It's terrible. It it's was a terrible. nice look. Gambit was a nice try. OK, if Drifter is is messing around for story reasons, take Gambit out until you fix it. Right. They did it with Trials. They've yeah. tried it with Iron Banner. Get rid of it. Get rid of it until you figure it out. I I don't think anybody would mind. At the same time, the I don't really want them taking resources from the PvP or PvE teams to fix Gambit. Because PvE is in a fairly good place right now, I would say. Yeah. Uh here here's my other here here's my last like bold prediction. Mm -hmm. If I can offer one more. A major rework to seasons. What do you it mean by major it. rework? So by major rework, I mean we've we've gotten pretty complacent that we can expect a six player activity, the same standard battle pass, and about seven weeks of story in the end. Mm -hmm. I would like to see some sort of change to that. I don't know what that looks like, but I think Chosen and Risen were onto something when they gave us the battlegrounds. Um, because those felt like that felt like a way to give us strikes without giving us more strikes. Yeah. And I like that because that made the general that in time that makes the general Vanguard playlist more bearable. Um, 
I think Haunted tried to do something different, but it wasn't well received for varying reasons. Um, and I mean, God, we we intended to talk about this season tonight. Uh, maybe we'll still get there. We, we have a lot of questions to get to. Um, but I think that Season of the Haunted kind of fell short in some ways because people saw Leviathan and immediately expected, oh, we're going to get all the old raids back without thinking. Um, you were never going to get four raids back at once. I hate to break it to you. You didn't play them when they were in the game and now you want them back. Like, right. that's some rose colored glasses shit right there. <clears throat> Just like when I see people saying that this is the worst season of Destiny they've ever played. Like, okay, there were at least three seasons that were worse. Like, I'm not saying that Haunted Did could not have Did you play Season of the Worthy? Did you play, Did you play Season? There are actually hardcore defenders of that season. That They're wrong. They're wrong. Yeah, I'm sorry. Season of You're the Worthy, wrong. Season of the Undying, and the Season of the Hunt were all and, things. And before, like, season seasons were a thing, Curse of Osiris, worst expansion since Curse of Osiris, probably, The Dark Below. Since The Dark Below. I, I'm sorry, yeah. Curse of Osiris is the worst expansion since Dark Below. Uh, Curse of Osiris almost made Luke Smith quit his job, so... <laughs> Like, we quickly forget how bad some of these things were. And the defense I see is like, well, at least they had strikes with them. Like, bro, listen, not every season has to hit 100 out of 100 for you. But for you to say that they're blatantly not doing good things right now is fucking wild. Like, listen, right. I was not a huge fan of going back to the Leviathan and grinding out those activities. But here's the thing. You didn't have to grind those out. You chose right. to grind those out. You could have easily enjoyed this season without playing a lot of that event. You should have. You could have still gotten the entire storyline. You could have enjoyed things. I get it. Overall, I do think that this was a weaker season. But I think when you stack it up with all the other seasons we've gotten, I mean, in the last in the last twenty four months, we have had in order: Season of Arrivals, Hunt, Chosen, Splicer, Lost, Risen, and Haunted. Haunted is gonna be at the bottom two of that list. Yeah. And that's again, not I don't a think bad was... thing because those other seasons are so good. I don't I this this season was definitely better than season of the hunt. Like way better. I think the event was better. I hunt I I I do think it's better overall than hunt. I would say the one thing hunt had going for it though was it was the introduction of crow, which was great. Ooh, I... That was very well done. And it had the hawkmoon quest. That was pretty fucking good. Yeah, I mean I'm not I'm not counting like I'm not counting the story stuff. No. Um, so like in terms of just seasonal event, yeah, I think that it's definitely better than Wrathborn Hunts. Yeah. Um, Wrathborn Hunts just sucked. Oh my gosh, they're so bad. Um, but there's no stupid mission I'm having to grind out repeatedly, like the High Celebrant, just to get a ship that I really, really wanted and wasn't able to get. Um, and, I mean, Worthy. Come on, man. Seraph Towers. Nobody liked Seraph Towers. Nobody liked Vex Offensive. Like, you gotta be kidding me on that shit if you think that those seasons were better. Ikora built a Vex portal in the tower, for God's sake. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Um, I will agree that I think that the loot pool was a little bit... But even the loot pool was still better than both of those seasons. Ah, I don't know. Um... This leads me to a question that we had, though, like, while, while we're getting at this. And this is circling back around to our predictions. Uh, hey, Zeus wrote in today and asked, uh, how much better do you think seasons will improve at this point next year? 10%, 50%, 100%? I'm going to say 30. I'm going to say 30%. Yeah. I'm going to There is a lot this... of room for improvement, but I think right now all resources are on Lightfall, Final Shape, whatever comes next, and Goliath. Mm -hmm. In that order. Yeah, I think... I don't I think, think that the... seasons are in a bad place, but I think that there is a limited amount that you can do. We know they're still staffing up on this stuff, but at, at, you got to be thinking it through their perspective. Okay, we've got six seasons between next Tuesday and the Final Shape coming out. Mm -hmm. How much do we want to dump into seasons that we aren't just going to leave to the narrative team. Like, the narrative team also has to tell them what they want to explore in those six seasons. We we talked about the logistics of that last week with our Zebu Arath theories and how it's going to be a little bit hard to cram in everything that they need to cram in before the final shape. And this is clearly why they needed two expansions. They needed Lightfall and Final Shape. Um, 
and I'm curious to see what gets held for the next expansion, but you have to figure out a way to satisfactorily wrap this up while still delivering new must play content. I like the loop that we're in, but it has be I, I do think it has become the six player activity motif has become a little bit stale. And I think part of the reason we think it's stale is because last year we went from splicer into lost and both of them had six player activities. That was nine months. We were doing a six player arena mode. And then we got another one with the witch queen. We got the wellspring. It wasn't even part of the season, but we got one in Witch Queen. We got one this season now with the glorified public event, essentially. Yeah. I think that's a little bit hard for players. It's It's been a year and some change of getting nonstop arena modes. We wanted more of these. We didn't want this to be all we got. That's why I think, like, Sever, the PsyOps Battlegrounds, um, the, uh, the Astral Plane missions that we got, the expunge missions, I think those have all been great to sprinkle in there. And I think that as long as you keep, if you want to do an arena mode or something like that, cool. I support you doing that. But I also really like that you're giving us the separate story missions also. Mm -hmm. And I think Sever is probably the best way that they've done those missions. Expunge was cool. Like the aesthetic was awesome. But how much story were we really advancing in Expunge? We were advancing it through Override. Right. We were advancing it through Saint-14 and through Mithrax dialogue. Mm -hmm. Like Even in just the last year, they've taken pretty big strides, I think, in how they've structured the story stuff. Like, Sever is some of the best... I, the missions, maybe not, but they had some basic mechanics you had to know in there. And the story that we got through Crow, Zavala, and Keitel, and Eris was awesome. Mm -hmm. I think that was really, really well done. And it made it to where you wanted to run those missions. Those were seven missions that were really well done, in my opinion. Yeah. But there's always room for improvement. Just like last year, we talked about like, oh, Expunge was really cool, but they didn't really matter until you did Delphi. And oh my God, uh, Quaria is here. What? Yeah, that was cool. Why is she like, why is she here? This is a seasonal activity. Um, You know, the Astral Alignments. Okay, cool. Like they were fine. The Shattered Realm, I think, was really cool. Finding all the secrets was really cool in there. I think that was a season that really rewarded those of us who like to explore and find every little thing. Mm -hmm. But did we have something like life changing happen like week to week? We had like we had dialogues after the missions, but when were we actually getting stuff inside the missions? Like we have been with Sever or with Psyops, right? You know. Um, mm -hmm. And I think, like, obviously Battlegrounds last year was kind of the prototype for all that. Like, that really hit. And they're like, hey, these missions were great. People really like these. They really like the Quarian mission. Let's build on that for next year. We got three more, we got three PsyOps Battlegrounds. We got the Sever activities. I'm curious to see what they do for these next two seasons now. And I'm hesitant to give too much of an answer beyond, like, 25 30% right now. Because I think that we're going to get seasonal talk on Tuesday as well. They have to know that's a big gripe of the community. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I, I'd like to see some more structure. You look at some of the best received things of the last couple of years, though. Hawkmoon, Dead Man's Tale. Um, give me more missions like that. But I don't know. Like, I, I'm hesitant to say give them to me as dungeons. But secret missions like that are great. I mean, look at all the special stuff you had to do in those missions to get things like the Catalyst or to get, like, ships and ghosts and whatnot there's so much you can do there right. so i know that it probably takes considerable resources to make something like uh exp or not exp well to make expunge but to make um presage or to make um the hawk moon quest mm -hmm. please just don't make it like box obscura right we can all live without getting another one of those missions. Because um, that was not fun. That, that was an example of a mission like that that was just not fun for anybody. Nope. So, I think that would be, like, my last thing. I, I just, I want to see another secret mission teased. And I feel like this next season probably will give us one, especially if the Dreadnought comes back. There's infinite yeah. things you can do with that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Corey, any final thoughts on what we see in the showcase? We just kind of gave our thoughts on Season of the Haunted, uh, but we have a lot of questions to get to tonight. Yeah, we do. Uh, new merch. 
I want to see what Numbskull's next character is. <laughs> New merch, I feel like, is going to be a given. There's definitely going to be a waiting room, and I, I was joking last week, I'm going to be sitting here refreshing that and my controller to get into the game while we're <laughs> doing our recap. <laughs> I, I will be taking time to order my uh, limited edition Lightfall uh, collector's edition if uh, it goes up for pre-order while we're doing the recap. Yeah, I wonder it's, what it's going to be. Oh, man, I, the... I, I hope it's like a traveler and a pyramid statue. Mm, yeah, I would, I would have to that. get that. I would I'd love have to get that. that. I'm still mad I didn't get the Witch Queen one. I but... I love it. It's the if I was going to get any of them, it's the first one I've gotten since the D1 Ghost Edition. I'm glad mm-hmm. that I got this one. Yeah. All right, Corey. Let's do questions. Yeah. Let's do some Q's. Let's do some Q and A's. Uh, so our first question, it's actually three of them in one comes to us from Tom cat and socks. Three questions for you guys. Number one, do you think world line zero will be good with arc 3.0? Uh, of course that is the, that's the exotic sword from the war mind expansion. Um, I'm going to say, I'm not sure. I'm actually not the person to ask that question to. We, we need, we need a guest answer from a one Johnny is what we need. Yeah. Johnny. <laughs> John, Johnny. Um, I'm gonna say I'm gonna put this in the maybe category. Um, yeah. it could be, or it could be a complete disaster. I'm not really sure. Yeah, I don't really know. I'd like to see either. that sword be useful, though. I will say that. Yeah, I'm not a big sword guy, to be honest. As much as I love the yeah. glaive, I'm not a big sword guy. Uh, I I like swords, and even I don't use this sword. Um, yeah. I'm going to say, I'm going to say maybe like maybe you've been able to infer based off of the, uh, the arc blog by now. Um, mm-hmm. but with the movement uh, capabilities, it could be really good, uh, in maybe PVP or Gambit. I just don't see it being really useful in PVE. Uh, question mm-hmm. number two, will we ever be able to focus exotic armor stats like we can with legendary armor? Um, I would like to see this. Um, John speculated, um, last week, I believe that, it, it was either John or it was um, Nerd and Colonel when I was talking to them earlier this week. Um, we were like, man, I really hope that the armor focusing that we did during Solstice was like a template for how we're going to do armor crafting eventually. Mm-hmm. To this end, I would say that I think Glass Needles need to make a return. Um, I think a lot of us would like to see Glass Needles return as a Zer thing. Those were uh, things you could use to refocus your stats on uh, armor in D1. Yeah. It's one of the last things from Destiny 1 that I'd like to see brought over, and I think especially now that we're more into build crafting than ever before, it's needed. Yeah. Um, more than just being able to change your elements. So I'd li- I, I do think eventually, yes. Will it come with Lightfall? Maybe. Maybe we get armor 3.0 unveiled? I'm not really sure. We know Maybe. there's going to be some mod changes. Uh, t- Tuesday will answer so many questions that we have, unfortunately. Yeah. And this is one of those, I would say, I would say let's maybe think about revisiting this uh, in two weeks after we've gotten yeah. through a showcase and we have some more Lightfall details, especially if like several TWABs like start laying out things well in advance like they did last year. Mm-hmm. And then number three, will we ever see those sweet cloaks the speaker used to sell in D1 come to D2? I'm going to put this one in the no category. <laughs> I'm going to say no. Um, I think that we've gotten so many more regal and ornate cloaks at this point. Um, because let's be honest, like hunt- hunters love their class items. I, I love my cloaks. That's most of what I have transmogged. <sighs> I just don't see it happening. If they can't bring over my exotic dead orbit cloak from destiny one, I don't see this happening. Unfortunately. Um, yeah. I would like to see a lot of options brought over from D1, but I'm also one of those who I've been very, I'm also probably not the person to ask this question to, because I've been really clear that I want to just abandon destiny one stuff in general. At this point, I'm ready to say goodbye. I'm done. Um, Yeah. I've got almost everything I need. As soon as they bring back King's fall and wrath, the machine, I'm good. We can abandon D1. Um, As callous as that may seem, I'm ready to just ditch it. Um, yeah. you got any Have thoughts? You played on... D1 recently, Josh? Unfortunately, uh, it's rough, bad, man. It's, it's rough. rough, it's real rough. Um, our next, question I forgot it was 30, I, I forgot it was 30 frames a second, too. <laughs> oh, 60. dude, it's 
it's rough. The, I, I tried queuing into a strike and nobody else was queuing in the strike playlist, apparently. So I had to try and do it by myself and it was n- not possible. Um, we have some questions in the Discord, too, which you can join and be a part of. Uh, yeah, join the Discord, everybody. There's a link have, in the show notes. It's in the show notes. We we have uh, a question, of course. No episode is complete without a question from Andre. Favorite arm piece? The ornament and the moment it saved your behind during a clutch moment. Um, I'm going to answer this one first. It's Shards of Galanor. Uh, if you've ever heard me talk about mayhem then you know that i love running shards of galanor especially when it was like super broken and you get your super back instantly um Mm -hmm. more than a few times uh, i can't even count the amount of times it has saved my butt during uh trials matches where i've been able to wipe entire teams with it um yeah i would say that uh favorite ornament for it there was an ornament that came out during um Season of the Lost. I don't remember what it's called, but I really, really like it. Hmm. Corey, what's your favorite exotic arms ornament and moment it saved your butt? So I am wearing currently, well, with my one of my uh, void builds, I'm wearing Doomfang pa- uh, pauldrons mm-hmm. because they really amplified throwing your shields and it makes it better. Uh, so yeah, I'm also uh the ornament I'm wearing is uh embodiment of the war beast. Uh and it, it when you add certain shaders to it, it makes it look really cool. So and it's got like a instead of like the weird purple glowy horn things, it's got these fans on it that look really cool. Mm-hmm. So that's what I've been wearing. It looks ridiculous with the chest piece I'm wearing, but it still looks cool. I'm wearing a lot a, of armor wearing, combinations uh, look ridiculous these days. Yeah, I'm wearing an an Iron Banner chess piece. Uh, the not the current one, but the one from last the last set of armor. Got if they don't show new Iron Banner armor, by the way, at this thing, I just yeah, it so feels bad. like this is the season where you have to give us some. It's now been a full year since we got Iron Banner armor. Ah, gosh, it's a little rough. Uh, now with how they have it spread out, it kind of makes sense to me that we would only get one set if you're only going to have two Iron Banners a season. But yeah, no, it, it's time it's time to give us another set of it. Um, we have two questions from Joe Asus tonight. Joe Asus. Question number one: What sandwich do you think the witness would order? Ooh. Oh, th- this motherfucker orders something gross. He orders like tuna melts. No, he orders like the the vegetarian special or whatever that is. Uh, hold on, I have to. He look. orders the veggie delight from Subway. Oh no, no, he doesn't. Yeah, he, well, first of all, he orders Subway. He does not go to Earl of Sandwich. I mean, like I a real. Subway. I go to Subway. Yeah, but not. Uh, you're gonna choose Earl of Sandwich over Subway. Oh, yeah. He chooses Subway over Earl of Sandwich. So, yeah. By the way, I have Earl of Sandwich gift cards, Josh. I hate you. Uh, so he gets, he gets the veggie, the veggie sandwich, Josh. Feta, cucumber, red onions, lettuce, Roma, tomato, and Italian dressing. That's what he gets. It's gross. Mm. He's not getting anything good. He's not getting the holiday turkey. He's not getting the old Cuban. Do you see they have a Cuban now, by the way? I did. I'm actually very excited for that. I love Cubanos, so... Man, this guy, he doesn't know how to eat. But... No, he doesn't. He doesn't. He wants to conquer the known universe, but he uh, he orders the veggie delight from Subway. <laughs> um... <laughs> he, he orders the, oat, the oatmeal from a sandwich place. Oh, my God. He doesn't even order the breakfast sandwiches. Nope. Uh, Joey says, second question. He goes, I have another one. Fuck, Mary, kill. Zavala, Shax, or Saladin? Well, <laughs> we know we know Shax can fuck from the lore. So. Oh, 100%. 100%. Uh, man. Wait, Zavala, Shax, and Saladin, you said? Yep. Hmm. Uh, as, okay, as much as it pains me to say this, Mary, Mary Saladin, 
fuck Shaxx, kill Zavala. You're wild. You're fucking wild. So, we agree. Fuck Shax. Okay. Like, yeah. I'm sorry. I need him to, like, just scream out, Yes! Okay. Because I'm sorry. You know you know, this man definitely does it. When he, hit, when, when he hits his euphoric moment of release, he definitely yeah. screams like he does when you get multiple super kills at once. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You you were like a demon on those zones. No, oh, no. Um <laughs> no. Mary Zavala. These two things. Zavala has been a very he he I get the sense that Zavala is a very a very tender lover. Mm. Okay. I I feel like Zavala is a very tender lover. He's going to take care of you. He's going to protect you. Look look at how torn up he is over his wife and kid. It's been a thousand years and he still cries over him, man. That's why you kill him, because he's still over him and can't give you his full attention. Gosh. I don't care. That's even better. Oh, no. (laughs) I can have some alone time. Um, And then, I'm sorry, Lord Saladin. Go live on Kaido's fucking flagship for all I care. Bye. You won't give me new Iron Banner armor. This is what you get. Yeah. Where is my cool Cabal armor? Dude, where's my cool Cabal armor? Where are my good Iron Banner weapons? Saladin, get the fuck out of here. You've been voted off the island. You've been voted off the island. You've been evicted from the Big Brother house. You are the weakest link. You know what they need, though, for Iron Banner armor and weapons, by the way? It needs to be... The, the fusion of Iron Banner and Cabal stuff, but like a cool like butcher sword, but like oh dude, give, give, me, give me give me the give me the the guy the Cabal guys with the knives. Give me one of their swords. That's what I'm saying. The how is sword. that not an exotic already? I know, it's terrible. <sighs> so there you go, Joe. That's that that's your that's your answer. <sighs> Sammy Gobo writes in. If you could pick one non-Guardian character in Destiny to get the Traveler's special treatment and a ghost of their own, what character would it be? Uh, Amanda, probably. Yeah, I, I think Amanda Holiday has to be my pick. Um, yeah, she's the least No, annoying. no, no. What? Sweeper Mithrax. Bot. Mithrax. Oh. oh, yeah. Mithrax is my yeah. pick. 100%. Okay, yeah. Well, I... I bet he get. I bet he gets a ghost before. The I, end I of do thing. think that he gets one. I do think that uh, Mithrax gets a ghost. Um, yeah. I man, oh, God. I yeah. bet he sacrifices himself and gets one. Hundred percent. I Mithrax is my pick. Um, yeah. I think that we're going to see the other races get blessed by the Traveler um, mm-hmm. to put more pieces on the board for the battle with the Witness. Mm-hmm. Um, if the Hive were finally blessed, we know the Traveler rested above the. Uh, the Elixir at one point, and they weren't even lied to. So, uh, yeah, g- yeah, give my give my favorite uh, multi armed boy a ghost. That'd be really cool, like a cool kind of like experiment or like a cool game to play. Like, here are all the non light bearers in Destiny. What class would they be if they were given the light? Oh man, okay. I'm I'm gonna put that one in my back pocket. We're gonna save that for a rainy day. Yeah, because we be we could cool go on for like 45 minutes here. Yeah, um, yeah. So he he's my pick. If you want me to pick a human character, it's Amanda. Yeah, I I was thinking too small. If it's an Awoken, I'm gonna go Petra. Yeah, Petra probably deserves fuck one. Mara. Half of our audience is already thinking about that. I know, right? Um, <laughs> and then our final question tonight comes to us from Nerd Generalist. Uh, top three actors or actress choices for a new ghost voice. Oh, boy. Man, if he wasn't already Commander Zavala, Lance Reddick. Hmm. Yeah. I would... Y- you know who I would pick? Haley <laughs> Atwell. Ooh, that would be a good one. Yeah. Like her. Hmm. I've watched a lot of Better Call Saul lately. I would love Bob Odenkirk as a ghost. <laughs> That'd be a f- hilarious ghost. I'm, I'm kidding. If I was of... gonna pull, if I was gonna pull anybody from Better Call Saul, uh, I would say Jonathan Banks. Actually, I would. Uh, good old Mike as a ghost. Just like a, just like a super gruff, serious one. 
Yeah. Hmm. Who else would I pick? I don't know. I'm trying to I, like I'm trying to pick someone who might be kind of realistic. Who's um, the voice actor for Garrus from Mass Effect? Oh. If I don't get a ghost saying that they've got to finish these calibrations, we've all been robbed. Uh, Garrus, Brandon Keener is the American voice actor for Garrus. Cool, Brandon Keener, step on up. You're now a ghost in Destiny. Yeah, that'd be cool. Uh, let's see. Here's the thing: there's too many voice actresses that like. I mean, there's not enough of them, but like too many. Like they all. Every character is played by the same voice actor. I uh, so a serious answer. He's he's doing the witness already, but I really I really like his voice acting. I loved him in Until Dawn. Uh, I would love for Brett Dalton to get a somewhat like maybe not even heroic role. Give him a, give him a, like a sinister ghost or something, or let him voice Mithrax's ghost or something. Uh, I would really like to see him voice one. Oh. I think he could do really good too. Yeah, but he's already the witness, so that's kind of uh, throwing a uh, a wrench into plans. Yeah, hmm. But there's no. <laughs> they've already set the precedent of one person playing multiple characters. That's in this true. Game. That's I mean, true. Nolan North played Cade when he. What died, would you do so... if Nathan Fillion voiced a ghost again? Voice the ghost. Yeah. What if he came and voiced the ghost? I mean, that... what would you do? I mean, that's fine with me, I think. That's cool. <laughs> uh, I actually have an actress in mind uh, because I like her. I, I've been watching the Orville. Uh, and one of the actresses who plays the actress who plays Tala on the Orville, Jessica uh, Zor. Okay. She, I feel like she would be a pretty great voice for a ghost. She plays like a she plays like a security officer on the show and she's like really kind of quippy, but also very intelligent. And I feel yeah. like that would be a pretty good role. All she right. also played Vanessa on Gossip Girl, but I wasn't going to play that card because I would not know. I would because I watched all six seasons of Gossip Girl when it was on. <laughs> it's unfortunate. These have been confessions from Corey Deering. Oh. <laughs> uh, it's not the worst thing I watched the entire run of, so check back later, everybody. <laughs> check back later. Uh, do we have any closing thoughts, Corey? Uh, before we get out here, I, we're we're not gonna we're gonna we're gonna skip lower corner tonight in the interest of time and uh, my throat, which is rapidly getting sore from talking. Yeah, I mean we've been going for an hour and a half. It's not yeah. like it's not like we've been going for five minutes, <laughs> you know. I uh, uh, I do want to lay out one thing as as we wrap up. Um, just kind of the game plan for the next couple of weeks. Um, obviously you're getting an, you're getting the episode you're listening to right now on Tuesday, the twenty third. You're going to get a special um, early afternoon episode. It's going to go up. Um, it's going to be a recap of the showcase and everything that was talked about during that uh, from myself. A1 Johnny, Nerd Generalist, and Colonel Panic. Uh, the four of us are going to put that together. Thursday is going to be a regular episode like always. And then beginning of the week after, um, that first week of September, um, on either Monday or Tuesday, you're going to get another special episode, which is going to be King's Fall Impressions. I don't yet know who's going to do that with me because I haven't asked anybody. I'm just preemptively saying that we're going to do it, even if it's just me doing it for like 25 minutes by myself. But I'd really like to grab uh, a couple of the guys from RLFG who have not experienced King's Fall before to give us a totally different reaction. Um, kind of how we did with the Vault of Glass reactions. So be on the lookout for all of that. Um, I really like doing special dungeon and raid recap episodes. Those those are really fun to me. Like as soon as we get them done, we're, we're hitting the recording booth a day or two later. Um, and yeah, I, I'm ready. Corey, five more sleeps. I know. At the time so of this ready. recording, five more sleeps until we know what's coming in the future. And yeah. we know how much money we're going to spend. Oh, no. So much money. So much. Uh, Destiny is always worth the money, though. Um, Yeah. This is it, though, Josh. This is it. This is it. Next, New season on Tuesday? The next season, the next episode, I ha- I'm going to have to find a logo for the, uh, the season. For those who watch on on youtube 
you know the thumbnail has the season art on the bottom left hand corner. I'm gonna have to find a new logo for the next season, Josh. <laughs> well, you'll have it on Tuesday, bud. Yeah. So I wanna thank everybody for watching and or listening to this episode of Tower Casuals. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Tower Casuals. You can email the show, towercasuals at gmail.com. Join our Discord. It's super fun. Show off your fashion, ask some questions, hang out, tell us about your sandwiches, all that good stuff. Josh, thank you for your time tonight, as always. Always. It's always a pleasure sitting here every Thursday. Every tell Thursday. People where, tell people where they can find you. At Josh underscore Finn, two ends on Twitter. And in the Discord, of course. Of course. As Finn. As Finn, yep. <laughs> you, can, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at at I am Corey and HD. You can also find me in the discord. I'm going to kind of be doing some things. So maybe something, I don't know. Uh, leave us a five-star rating and review on Apple podcasts and Spotify. And yeah. I want to thank everybody for watching and or listening. And until next time, we love you. Goodbye. We'll see you on Tuesday. See you Tuesday.